think it was supposed to happen like that. <laughs> All right, you know, it's time to bring in the next press secretary uh, of the United Thank States. You. It is going to be Sean. Sean Spicer. It became official yesterday. Thank you. I know it's a great day for you. Uh, when did you first, in your gut, think, I got this job? Was it just when he told you, or did you know it was the call was coming? Um, I hoped it would come, but... As with everything, until Donald Trump decides and tells you it's official, it's not official. And so until he called and said congratulations, um, I had a little bit of doubt. Sure. <laughs> Tell us about the team. It's going to be you and Hope Hicks. Yep. Uh, Jason, Miller. Jason Miller. Kellyanne Conway is the head of that. Uh -huh. uh, she's been a loyal and trusted aide of his, and so she's she's going to be counselor to the president. Jason's going to be communications director. Hope Hicks is going to be director of strategic communications. Dan Scavino, who's going to be director of social media. And I think we'll, we'll continue to round out the team in the next few weeks. So who are you going to, you know, being the official spokesperson for the President of the United States is a daunting task. Uh -huh. because It's yeah. a very humbling task. The whole world is hanging on every one of your words. I have noticed over the last number of years, though, some of the official spokespeople for the President of the United States have become very partisan. Um, are you go what's going to be your approach in, are you going to be spinning for the President? Are you going to try to keep it just straight? Or well, I mean, I, I think... My job is to make sure I take, articulate his agenda uh, and make sure that if people get it wrong or they don't interpret the facts correctly, that I get out there and correct the record. But You're I call him out. Absolutely. He does it all the time. I think our job is to make sure that people understand what's really happening, what he's doing to make their lives better, how he's going to make this country great. Um, and if they don't do it, accurately, uh, then we're going to call them out. So you're going to be in their face. If somebody, well, look, makes, look, some, if somebody look, makes a mistake, you're going to just call sure. hey, Washington Post. You've got this all wrong. Right. But at the same time, I think that we, we want to work with, with folks who want to get it right, who want to understand the issues. Um, but we're not going to let facts that, that aren't correct go right. by. So right. uh, Tony Snow, who is here and did an unbelievable job as press secretary, I thought he changed the whole face of it. He made it conversational. Right. You saw his communication ability. He said to George Bush when he was asked, I'll do it if you include me in on the meetings. I got to be in on the meetings because when he went in front of the press, he did not want to have any go between. He wanted to make his own conclusions about what he thought the president was trying to convey. Did you have a precondition like that? Do you have to be in on those meetings if you have to go out and face the press. Well, <laughs> one big difference is no one dictates terms to Donald Trump. I he, 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 it's very clear. It's the other way around. He tells you how it's going to be. Uh, he's been very good at making sure that we know what's going to happen and what he wants to communicate. So he tells us, here's what I want you to say. Here's why I think you need to say. And then our job is to go forth and do it. But you never make a precondition with Donald Trump. And you never tell him what you want. He tells you. What All right. You well, want. tell us what he meant by this. Because he tweeted out, talking about the inauguration and celebrities wanting tickets. He said, the so-called A-list celebrities are all wanting tickets to the inauguration, but look what they did for Hillary. Nothing. I want the people. That's right. But it's always been America first with him. It's about the people. It's about the people uh, in a middle America who are out there who have had frustrations and concerns that haven't been answered by Washington. He has been very clear. The American worker, American businesses are going to be first in his administration. He wants an inauguration that reflects that. Sure. Uh, there have been some suggestions that uh, you're f it's, it's tough to find some performers. Uh, the Beach Boys may do it. The Rockettes have, have accepted. It's interesting, though. A young woman by the name of Phoebe Pearl, she is a dancer on the Rockettes team. She went to Instagram, and she said, among other things, I am speaking just for myself, but please know that after we found out the news that they would be dancing for Trump, we have been performing with tears in our eyes and heavy hearts. Hashtag not my president. She does not like the president-elect. And if she could, she would hang up her shoes and not show up. She's well, one of the Rockettes with the long legs and kicks high. <laughs> well, look, I, I think this president has made it very clear that it's about the American people. Um, he wants an inauguration that's about them. But it's amazing to me how many of these folks, these so-called celebrities, will pick up the phone and, and call him when no one's looking and say, hey, I'd like to be part of this, or can I talk to you about something? Uh, they, they want I to can't do it in public. Right, I can't do it in public. But they call him in the private. Thing is, do you really think the people care? I mean, but he, that's the point, is that he looks, look at all the people that came out for, for Hillary Clinton and had concerts. He doesn't need celebrities. People are coming to see him. 
and he's about, the right, celebrity. He is the celebrity. The middle and it's, it's, it's his movement that people are coming to. And they're not coming to see a performance. Right. And that's what he wants this he president to celebrity. And, well, it's not just that he's a celebrity. He's the decider. He's the doer. He's the guy that's going to get things done. And again, I, I just think that it's amazing because too often people are worried about the show. What he's worried about is the results. And he's getting them now. You look at the carrier deal. He saved those jobs. The F-35 saving a billion dollars. Air Force One bringing in the CEOs and getting the costs down. He's getting things done already, and he's not president yet. Mm -hmm. So yesterday he came out and talked about our nuclear arsenal. He wants right. to upgrade it and update it. Uh, and here is the exact uh, tweet, if we want to put it up. Uh, he's, and this is what caused a little bit of consternation. He said this, the United States must greatly strengthen and expand its nuclear capability and send uh, until such time as the world comes to its senses regarding nukes. Was that in response to what Vladimir Putin had it said? It was in response to a lot of countries. Russia, China, and others are talking about expanding their nuclear capability. And his point, which I think a lot of people are leaving off at the end of that tweet, is unless they come to their senses. And I think countries need to know that under a Donald Trump presidency, business as usual is over. He's going to act. He's going to protect America. And if they increase their nuclear capability, America will act. Should he have checked with Barack Obama first? No, he's, he's the, he's the president-elect. He doesn't need to check with people, but I will say this. The, yeah. the President Obama and his team have been unbelievably gracious to the president-elect and his team. Um, we respect the fact that there's one president at a time, but this president is not going to sit back and, and just wait for things to happen. He's going to get things done. I, I love the fact that he tweeted this out yesterday. Based on the tremendous cost and cost overruns of the uh, F-35, I have asked Boeing to price out a comparable F-18 Super Hornet. There's a new sheriff in town, no, no, isn't there? No, there is. But you think about what that means. He's going to say he respects the American taxpayer, mm -hmm. how much money they're putting. This is about getting things done and getting it done right. right. Business as usual is over. He's taking the business practices that he has used to be so successful. Yeah, but we've never had a president negotiating contract. I get it, but look at the results. It's amazing. He's going to be very hands-on and very successful at making, right. at making this country better. You could take a deep breath right now. Have you taken a time to say... I, you know, I can't believe I'm in this position. You're a, you know, you're a commander in the Navy, in Navy commander who could be called back into uniform. You're somebody who's a spokesperson of communication for the House Budget Committee. And next thing you know, they say, go to Trump Tower. Donald Trump has won the nomination and help us out. Be the RNC eyes and ears. And now you're press secretary. Have you thought about your dad who just passed away and how proud he would be? I have. And he would. Uh, it's unbelievably humbling to have this job um, and to know that you're in a very, very select club. It's, it's an honor to speak for this country, to, for this president-elect, and, uh, and I know my father would be proud. Yep, and there's no doubt about it. And you Sean. earned it, Sean. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. Congratulations. Thank you, Sean. All right. All right.